Hello again, you're watching Everard Junction and this is another how-to video. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to weather a passenger vehicle. Now a passenger vehicle is basically a DMU or a coach or perhaps a mail, I mean a baggage type car or something, something that is used by people uh, rather than goods and they need to be weathered in a different way. If you haven't seen my previous weathering video, which was how to episode 12, where I weathered a class 37 into quite a grimy looking uh, sort of freight locomotive, that is uh, quite a good video to watch for just sort of how to do sort of general weathering. I'm gonna be skipping over parts of that in this video because I will be assuming you've already watched that. So if you haven't seen how to episode 12, please check it out before watching this one. So the trick to weathering a passenger vehicle uh, which differs slightly from my last video, is subtlety. You really don't want to overdo it. Passenger vehicles are used by the general public. They pay for their tickets. They expect to get where they're going in speed, comfort, reliability, and value for money. So, even in the 1980s, when everything was run by British Rail, even then, they did make quite an effort to keep things clean. Certainly things that were used by passengers. Obviously, freight locos that's another story that differs uh, quite considerably but passenger locos were generally kept quite clean so it's important when you paint something up make it look used that you don't make it look like it's on the scrap heap so you can see here for example the body side of the loco is pretty clean there's a little bit of dirt hardly anything to be honest it's just not shiny it just it just has a matte finish to it otherwise it's clean and that's how you generally saw the locos, because they were generally run fairly regularly, including carriages, through washing plants or washed by staff members um, at the uh, TMDs. And the body sides were washed and kept clean, so they looked good for the passengers when the train came into the station and made the company that ran the train look like they actually cared about what they were doing. Parts of the locomotive or carriage that couldn't be seen by the passengers is generally very dirty. This isn't really washed by the train washing equipment because it can't reach it and it's not cleaned by staff because it's too complex and it would take too long to clean it. So things like engines, exhaust pipes, radiator grills, aircon units, compressed tanks of air, brake shoes, brake lines, speedo cables, all that sort of thing. Anything below the chassis of the locomotive, so bogies, bearings, wheels, all of that, is all going to be nice and filthy. And as you can see, I've done a reasonably good job of trying to represent that. So just in this area, you've got the exhaust for the engine, you can just see the engine up on the right hand side. That's quite sort of grey, sort of black in appearance. And then when we move away from the oily bits of the engine, it's more of a a brake dust kind of colour, more of a, there's a bit more brown in it. You can see as we progress towards the engine it gets more dirty. The same is true for the top of the coach, or DMU in this case. The roofs were not really cleaned. As you can see the roof is quite grimy, particularly here where the exhaust pipes are. Remember the unit would have travelled in both directions so you would have got exhaust dirt here and here. These were rarely seen by the passengers unless the passenger was passing over a footbridge, so they weren't cleaned. So basically all that was clean was the sides and the front. And I've added a little bit of buffer grease as well on the buffers, just to add a little bit of extra detail. That was often seen. Just makes it look a bit more interesting. Wheels are painted as well, because they would have been nice and grimy. Backmen tend to ship their locos with black wheels, which look okay. Hornby tend to ship the locomotives with silver wheels. They don't look so good, they definitely need painting. So, I'm going to show you how to uh, achieve this effect. Make a passenger vehicle look used, but not overdone. Not on the scrap heap. Just looks like a regular DMU passenger vehicle that you would have seen on a typical day in the station. Regular viewers will have noticed that the platforms have been re completely rebuilt. I'll be coming onto that in future videos. So the passenger train I'm going to use uh, to demonstrate in this video is another Backman Class 108. Uh, this one's in BR blue. So it's take the body off, take all the windows out, take the wheels off, paint the chassis separately, paint the wheels separately, paint the body shell separately, reassemble the glazing and put it back into the model then put the body shell back on the chassis, put the wheels back on and check it all still works. That way you'll avoid getting any paint on the glazing 
and uh, you'll also avoid getting too much grime from the underframe on the actual body shell. Okay, so I've separated the body from the chassis on both ends, taken out all of the glazing. I'll keep that to one side, making sure I don't get any paint or anything on it. Um, you can see I've taken the windscreens out as well. Be careful when you take the glazing out, it's reasonably well glued in on most models, but with a little bit of pressure from your finger on the outside of the window, or just a little bit of leverage on the inside with a screwdriver, can usually prise it off quite easily. And you shouldn't damage anything when you take it all out. I've also taken off all the wheels, including the driving wheels at the end. So if we pick up the motor car, you can see there's the uh, gearbox, and I've just popped the drive wheels out and then just replaced the bogey back where it was. So I can now spray all the way along the bottom of here, making sure the interior is masked up. So spray all of this nice and dirty. Um, I'll be using a variety of colours. Um, I use uh, black uh, oily steel, uh, sleeper grime, um, and roof dirt to get the different sort of effects that I'm trying to get underneath the unit. So the first thing I do is just brush paint the surface of the wheels with uh, sleeper grime, which is this colour here. This is Rail Match Sleeper Grime, it's number 406. You can get it from quite a few shops. I get mine from Howes Models, who are the main Rail Match paint distributor. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a streaky effect uh, on the roof uh, before I start the airbrushing. Um, I've got some roof dirt here. It's really, really thin. It's about 80% thinner, 20% paint. I'm just going to brush it horizontally across the uh, roof. And that will build up a nice streaky effect that will come through the uh, finish on the airbrush and just make the roof look a little bit more interesting and a little bit more grimy like the unit has been in service for a number of years. So there we go, We've got a streaky effect on the roof and while it dries I'm going to move on to doing the underframes of the DMU. I've already painted the wheels, these are still drying at the moment. So while all this dries, I'll spray this up. So I've added a little bit of uh, roof dirt to some of the areas, particularly around the engine. Um, I'm just starting to build up the colours there. Um, now while that dries, um, I'm going to move on to the roofs of the uh, body shells. Okay, so I've done the roof, and we've got uh, some exhaust dirt there as well, which is uh, still drying. You can see as well on the sides, by spraying the roof, you get a tiny bit of overspray down the side of the body, and it just darkens it down the tiniest little bit, and that will be further enhanced by the matte varnish which I'm going to apply. So now, I need to put some matte varnish over the entire model, so that all of the paintwork that has got onto the sides that is on the roof, and anything anywhere else is all sealed in. So when you actually start handling it and putting the glazing back in, you don't rub off all the paint you've just applied. So there we go, everything has had a nice coat of matte varnish, it's all now drying, 
and then once that's all dry I'd leave it a good 12 hours to dry before you did anything with it once it's all dry you can refit the glazing and then pop it back onto the uh, chassis the chassis have had a coat of matte varnish as well they're all still drying you can see where I've exaggerated the black around the engine and around a few other places as well just to make it look a bit varied rather than all the same colour and again I'll leave this a good 12 hours and then I'll pop the wheels back into it and check it all still works okay so I've reassembled the model I've put all the wheels back in um, given it a quick run around the layout just to make sure it still works um, sometimes you can find that uh, the running's a little jerky after you've weathered something there's usually just a little bit of excess paint somewhere give the train you know, a few laps and eventually it'll uh, sort itself out, it'll grind away whatever paint is causing the problem. Here you can see the streakiness in the roof that I was referring to um, by not applying too much paint to the roof surface uh, via the airbrush um, you still get the brush strokes showing through, it looks really good. This BR Blue 108 is slightly heavier um, weathering than the, uh, the Network Southeast one that's just going past. And I did that because the Network Southeast one will have obviously have been repainted more recently, um, so chances are it's in better looking condition. Quick shot of the uh, underframe. You can see on the left hand side the engine, exhaust, and various uh, radiators and tanks is more oily, it's more mechanical, so there's sort of more oil and and diesel and stuff there and then on the right where you've got things like the battery boxes and another air tank um, where there generally isn't any sort of machinery so to speak um, it's more of a, a, a brownie sort of colour and it just varies the underneath a little bit it just makes it look a bit more interesting the bogies themselves they have a little bit of uh, sort of oil and dirt around the, uh, the wheels and the uh, bearings and the springs and then on the actual uh, frame of the bogey sort of in the centre bit more brown. Front is still fairly clean as is the sides and it looks sort of presentable to the passengers. It doesn't look like it's on the scrap heap, it just looks used. 